Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Wise. I am a certified school psychologist and licensed behavior specialist with over 20 years experience working with people with academic and behavioral needs. I'm also the CEO of the free learning and behavior website, educationandbehavior.com. Thank you for joining me today to review 14 strategies to help children with ADHD. Although this presentation discusses strategies for children with ADHD, many of these strategies can be utilized to help any child with challenging behaviors. Children diagnosed with ADHD or who have ADHD-like symptoms frequently have difficulty at school. They often get yelled at, lose recess time, get put in time out, get detention, or get a phone call home. When they get home, they may be punished again for their behavior at school or for exhibiting challenging behaviors at home. Consequences in school generally occur when students have trouble in the following areas. Following directions, sticking to the class routine, keeping track of assignments, staying seated, staying in their area, working quietly, completing their work, or raising their hand before speaking. Students with ADHD cannot always control their behavior. Actions can come out impulsively before the child has the opportunity to think about or realize the potential consequences. Their actions are not based on willful, purposeful defiance. When children get punished for actions they cannot control, behaviors often get worse. Over time, from being embarrassed in front of peers, yelled at by teachers and or parents, and punished for things they cannot help, their self-esteem goes down. They feel frustrated and angry, and they may shut down, refusing to do work, not communicating their feelings with adults, or their behaviors may increase rather than decrease. Check out a related article, Nine Practical Strategies to Decrease Impulsive Behavior in Children. While every child with ADHD is different, on the next slides you will see some common characteristics found in children with ADHD. Children with ADHD may have difficulty catching directions the first time. They may be distracted by something else or thinking about something else. Remembering directions, they are often thinking of so many things they may forget information that the parent or teacher deems important. Controlling their impulses, they may blurt something out, grab something from another student, call out in class, etc., even after being told not to several times. Remembering or carrying out multiple steps, such as that in the morning routine in class. For example, unpack, put your belongings away, take out your pencil and morning journal, complete the writing assignment on the board. Or for an educational assignment, such as completing a long division problem or planning a school project. Concentrating or focusing for prolonged periods of time, which may be required for a written assignment, a reading assignment, or listening to a teacher-directed lesson. They can become distracted by movement or noises in the environment, distracted by their own thoughts, feel a need to get up and move, or simply need a mental break because they can only sustain attention for so long. Keeping their body still or remaining seated. Keeping materials organized or keeping track of important papers or belongings. For a related article, see what are the symptoms of ADHD and what can you do to help. With the right strategies in place, children with ADHD symptoms can make positive behavior changes in school and at home. As a parent, be an advocate for your child. Work with your child's teacher, administrator, and guidance counselor to help them understand your child's symptoms. Let the school know that your child needs to be supported rather than punished for behaviors they may not be able to control. It is important to understand, however, that a teacher's job can be overwhelming. She has 20 plus students to manage, lesson plans to write, tests to grade, scores and grades to keep, etc. It can be overwhelming for a teacher to implement all the strategies necessary to support students with behavioral needs like those with ADHD especially when he or she may have more than one child with behavioral challenges in her classroom. Despite these facts, your child's teacher should put forth her best effort to understand what strategies are recommended for children with ADHD or children with challenging behaviors and try her best to put these strategies in place. If she cannot meet your child's needs due to being overwhelmed, the school needs to work with you and her 
using a team approach to figure out how to utilize all possible resources in the building. For example, can the guidance counselor get involved? Can a peer buddy help? Can an administrator step in? There are a lot of resources in a school that can be exhausted in order to help teachers feel supported when implementing strategies. If a child's needs are so great that they cannot be supported in a classroom with one teacher, even after all school resources have been exhausted, he may benefit from an evaluation by a school psychologist to determine what additional supports through special education he may be eligible for. Special education looks very different than it did in the past. Children can often remain in the regular classroom and receive extra support from a special education teacher or paraprofessional. Children with a medical diagnosis of ADHD or another condition like generalized anxiety disorder or depression are entitled to a 504 plan if their disability is interfering with their academic progress, but not to the point where they are in need of special education. Schools will also consider a 504 plan if a school professional, such as a school psychologist, determines that the student has ADHD symptoms and is in need of accommodations, but is not in need of special education. As a parent, work with the school team to understand the behaviors your child is exhibiting. For example, is he talking too much and not completing work? Is he or she out of their seat and calling out? Are they losing their papers and forgetting how to carry out routines? Is it all of the above? The following slides contain a list of specific strategies to support children with ADHD or ADHD-like symptoms in school, followed by a list of strategies that gives recommendations for whole class strategies that benefit all children, including those with ADHD. Number one, if a child has trouble sitting still or staying in his seat, he should be given opportunities to move throughout the day. Examples could include standing up and stretching as needed, getting a drink in the hall, running an errand to the office, passing out papers, incorporating movement into lessons, uh, not taking recess away, using a fidget item at the student's desk, sitting in a wobble seat or at a standing desk. These are items specifically made for students that may have trouble remaining in their seat. Number two, seat the child away from distractions as much as possible. Keep the child seated away from the window, door, pencil sharpener, and talkative peers. Three, have a list of steps available for students who can read so they can refer to the list for tasks requiring multiple steps. For example, a list of the steps for the morning routine or a list of steps for long division. Remind them to refer to the, to the list if they forget the steps and do not independently refer to the list. Number four, Chunk classwork into small manageable steps. Give the student a certain task to complete, check it when done, and then give him a break to move or engage in a preferred activity when the task is completed. For example, if the class has to complete 20 math problems, allow the student with ADHD to complete 10, take a two to five minute break and complete the next 10. Make the goal reasonable for the child. Some children might need a break after only five questions. For more open-ended assignments, such as listening to a class lecture, try using a timer. For example, have the student listen for five minutes and write down three important facts, then give the student his break. Also use a timer to time the break time. Allow the timer to dictate the end of the break rather than you arbitrarily saying, okay, break's over. Let the student know the exact plan. For example, after you write down three facts, you will have a two-minute break. For children who have trouble understanding the concept of time or numbers, a visual timer can be helpful because the child can see how much time is left. Visual timers can be purchased on Amazon or other online stores. Just do a Google search for visual timers. You can also find free visual timers in your app store. Just to clarify, this is not indicating that you put time constraints on how long the child has to complete a task. The timer signals how long a child will be working on a task before a break and how long the break will last. See three ways to use timers to encourage homework and chore completion for more information. 
This is a red clock visual timer. Children can see the time running out as the red disappears. And here's a sand timer. Children know when the time is up when the sand at the top gets to the bottom. And you can see there's a one minute, three minute, five minute, and 10 minute sand timer here in the picture. Um, there are all different ones available. Graphic organizers can be another great way to help students with ADHD pay attention during lectures. See the article, How to Use Graphic Organizers to Improve Reading Comprehension, Writing, Listening, Note-Taking, and Study Skills for exactly how to implement this strategy. Number five, assist the student with staying organized. Show him exactly how to organize his materials and supervise and guide him regularly while he tries to do it independently. As he becomes more independent with organization, slowly fade out the organization checks. Number six, stay close to the student. Frequently walk by his desk, keep him seated near your desk or stand near his desk when teaching. Whichever strategy makes the most sense for your classroom. Number seven, use hands-on and interactive materials to teach concepts. Watch how much attention increases when children have images and materials to handle and focus on while learning. This works well with many children, not just those with symptoms of ADHD. Next are some class-wide strategies to help all students, including those with ADHD. Number one, phrase directives in the positive and use redirection. Tell your students what you want them to do rather than what you don't want them to do. For example, you can say, put your pencil down instead of stop tapping your pencil, or look up here instead of stop talking, or finish writing your sentence instead of stop playing with things in your desk. Sometimes nonverbal redirection, such as tapping the student's paper to remind him to continue writing, or pointing to where the student should be is enough. Number two. Post clear rules that tell your students exactly what you expect. For example, raise your hand, quiet while working, stay in your area, and frequently review these rules. When any child breaks the rules, including a child with ADHD, remind him of the rule in a neutral tone. For example, when the student calls out, point to the rule and say, raise your hand when you have something to say. Some children respond to a simple gesture even better than a verbal reminder of the rule. For example, pointing to the rule or making a gesture such as raising your own hand to remind the child to raise his hand. Remember to phrase rules in the positive. Raise your hand rather than in the negative, stop calling out. Children respond better when you tell them what to do rather than what not to do. Here's an example of class rules phrased in the positive. Be kind, raise your hand if you have a comment or question, keep your hands and feet to yourself, do your best to follow teacher directions and complete your work. Implement these rules with consistency. If you allow some of the children to break the rules some of the time, you can't expect children to know when to follow the rules. The expectation should be for them to follow the class rules at all times. Number three, give children choices throughout their day. This gives students a sense of control. Feeling in control is very important for students with challenging behaviors. When they feel more in control, they are less likely to defy you because they feel like their opinion matters, which helps them feel respected. Here are some examples of choices for students. Do you wanna write your assignment on paper or type it on the computer? Read a page from a book of your choice and summarize the page by either drawing a picture or writing a paragraph. After you complete your assignment, do you want to play a math quiz game or play hangman on the board? Number four, use random selection to call on students rather than just calling on the ones who raise their hands. For example, you can write each student's name on a popsicle stick and put the sticks in a cup. A student will never know when their turn is coming to participate, which will encourage all students to pay attention. Number five, keep lessons short or break longer lessons up into mini lessons that vary in type and style. For instance, talk to the class about how to use the CH sound. 
have them practice making CH words with magnetic letters on a portable whiteboard, then have them write words with CH and draw a picture to go with each word. Number six, praise students for following the rules and participating. For example, thank you for raising your hand. You worked very quietly today. You remained in your area during your assignments. Nice work. Great participation during science today, etc. This helps with student self-esteem, reinforces rules, and motivates other students to receive the same type of praise. Number seven, allow students to earn time to engage in preferred activities for following class rules and completing their assignments. Preferred activities can include movement breaks, class time to play a game, 10 minutes of extra recess, 15 minutes to talk to peers, drawing a picture, computer time, or whatever you deem appropriate for your students and classroom. For more ideas for preferred activities, check out the article Break Ideas to Increase Student Motivation. When working with children at home, encourage them to complete homework, chores, and follow rules by using the same methods described in this presentation for encouraging compliance in the classroom. Did I miss something? Comment below. Thank you for reviewing 14 strategies to help children with ADHD in the classroom or at home. Again, this is Rachel Wise, CEO of educationandbehavior.com. Please subscribe, like, and share if you found this presentation helpful.